In this video, I'm going to pick the best rugby players of the 2010s at each position, but unlike previous videos where I listed the nominees for each position, then explained my selection, I'm going to list three teams with a first, second and third team. Only performances from 2010 to 2019 will be taken into consideration. Starting with my third string team, in the front row we have Keane Healy, Bishmark Duplessis and Dan Cole. In the second row I selected Maro Etorje and Peter Steph Dutoy. In the back row I selected Thierry Dusatoire and Michael Hooper as my flankers, with Louis Pickamol as my number 8. At scrum half I selected Conor Murray with Bun Barrett at 10. In the centres I've chosen Jamie Roberts at 12 and Adam Ashley Cooper at 13. Then on the left wing I have Rico Iwani with Israel Dagg on the right wing and Stuart Hogg at full back. Moving on to my second string team. I've chosen a front row of Tony Woodcock, Malcolm Marks and Martin Castro Giovanni. In the second row I've chosen Eben Etzebet and Alan Wynne Jones. Then for the loose forwards I've chosen David Pocock at 6, Sam Warburton at 7 and Sergio Parise at 8. At scrum half I've chosen Will Guinea with Johnny Sexton at number 10. In the centres I have John De Villiers and Jonathan Davies. Then on the wings I have Nemanja Ndolo and Brian Habana with Ben Smith at full back. Now moving on to the first team, at loose head prop I've chosen Tendai Matawira aka The Beast. The Beast played for South Africa from 2008 to 2019 and he made 95 appearances for the Springboks during the 2010s. The fact that he remained as their starting loose head throughout his entire career is a testament to his longevity and he played in 3 World Cups eventually winning rugby's greatest prize in 2019. At hooker I've chosen Dane Coles. Coles made 69 appearances for the All Blacks during the 2010s in which he scored 11 tries of his current total tally of 20. Coles is very mobile for a front rower and he can often be found out on the wing to offer support at the breakdown but also uses his pace to finish off tries. At tie head prop I selected Tyke Furlong. Furlong played in 44 tests during the 2010s having made his debut for Ireland in 2015. He made three starts for the British and Irish Lions in their series against New Zealand in 2017 and he quickly rose to a world class level, often being regarded as the best tie head prop in the world since he entered his peak form. At the first lock position I've chosen Brodie Ritalik. Ritalik played in 81 tests during the decade and was named as the World Rugby Player of the Year in 2014. With his huge stature, he's an intimidating player on the pitch for opposing teams and his work rate is immense as he regularly makes himself available to finish off incredible all backs tries. At the second lock position I've chosen Sam Whitelock. Having made his debut in 2010, Whitelock made a whopping 117 appearances for New Zealand throughout the decade, being the starting lock all throughout three World Cups, winning back to back trophies in 2011 and 2015. He was a pillar of consistency all throughout his career and performs the fundamentals that are required from a lock forward exceptionally well. At blindside flanker I've chosen Jerome Kano. Kano played 56 tests for the All Blacks during the 2010s scoring 8 tries before finishing his international career after the 2017 line series. Across the 2011 and 2015 World Cups, Kano played in all 14 games recording 14 consecutive wins and he scored 4 tries in the 2011 World Cup, a year where he was nominated for the World Rugby Player of the Year award. At open side flanker I've chosen Richie McCaw. Having also made it into my 2000s team, McCaw won the World Rugby Player of the Year award in 2010 and captained New Zealand to two World Cup trophies during the decade before retiring in 2015. For the number 8 position I've chosen Kieran Reid. Reid played in 111 tests during the decade captaining the side 52 times while also having an impressive try tally of 26. He was a fantastic athlete who appeared to have great natural strength which made him a very threatening ball carrier. He won the rugby championship 6 times during the decade and was named as the world rugby player of the year in 2013. For the scrum half position I've chosen Aaron Smith. Smith made his All Blacks debut in 2012 and made 92 appearances during the decade scoring 19 tries. Smith is first and foremost a great passer but he's also good at popping up in positions to score tries and can evade tackles with his speed and agility. Given how consistent his performances have been throughout his career, he might be considered as the best All Black scrum half in modern times and possibly one of the greatest number nines ever. At fly half I've chosen Dan Carter. Having made it into my team of the 2000s at inside centre, 
Carter makes it into the 2010s team at Fly Half, having won the World Player of the Year award twice during the decade, in 2012 and 2015. Despite facing some injuries, he still made 46 appearances for New Zealand during the decade, in which he scored 604 points before he retired from international rugby after winning the World Cup in 2015. Although he was less inclined to carve teams open with solo runs later in his career, he still possessed all of the skills you could want from a playmaking 10, with his amazing vision, passing, fending, and ability to draw defenders towards him, as well as executing great general kicking. At Insight Centre I've chosen Ma Nonu. Having made his debut in 2003, Nonu failed to make it into my team of the 2000s as there was some inconsistency with his form in his early career. But from 2010 onwards, his performance level was world class and he's the clear cut first choice for the number 12 jersey in this team. He played in 57 tests during the decade, scoring 18 tries, with one of his greatest highlights being the try he scored against Australia in the 2015 World Cup final. At outside centre, I've chosen Conrad Smith. Conrad Smith played 61 tests for the All Blacks throughout the decade, scoring 13 tries, and he was a key part of the All Blacks' backline in their World Cup runs in 2011 and 2015, making six starts in each tournament. Due to a lack of weaknesses on both sides of the ball, he was a fantastic all-round player and had a win percentage of 88% in the games he played for New Zealand in the 2010s. On the left wing, I've chosen Julian Sevilla. Continuing with the All Blacks dominance in this team, Julian Sevilla had an exceptionally high peak level of performance from 2012 to 2017. With a spectacular strike rate, he scored 46 tries in 54 games for New Zealand, while making it to the top of the try scoring charts in the 2015 World Cup with 8 tries. On the right wing I've chosen George North. Having made his debut for Wales in 2010, North made 94 test appearances during the decade in which he scored 41 tries, including the 2 tries he scored in the 3 tests he played for the Lions in 2013. He won the Six Nations 3 times including Grand Slams in 2012 and 2019. For the final place in the 2010s team, at full back I selected Israel Folau. Folau played for Australia from 2013 to 2018, scoring two tries on his debut against the Lions and during his Wallabies career he scored 37 tries in 73 games. He broke the Super Rugby all-time try scoring record with 60 tries, which has recently been levelled by Julian Sevilla. He won the Australian Player of the Year award three times and he was arguably the greatest player under a high ball in rugby history.